For the Rural Radio Network, I'm Joe Gangwish. No-till on the Plains winter meeting going on in Salina. With us is uh, Ray Archuleta. Ray, you're, uh, I guess, a world-famous uh, a <laughs> conservationist. But, you know, you've, you've talked no-till for, for many, many years, and it's good to have you uh, back in the area talking about uh, no-till with us. Now, you brought it more of a human aspect this time around. Let's, let's talk about that. Yeah, my whole point of my talk was talking about, uh, my title was Farming by Intelligent Design. And I was trying to get convey to our producers that if for us to be able to see the, the, the beautiful design that's out there is you have to understand your context, that you're part of that design. And I think what I learned when I walked away from college is that, uh, that I was separate from that design, that I was uh, not part of that system. And that's the wrong concept. So what I was trying to do is give people first a social and psychological context about how important it is to understand their ecological context. And I think what the reason why we're having problems with, with uh, conservation and the way the land is so degraded is because we don't understand those two contexts. And so my whole focus was to focus on that, on that, the human dimension part. It's got to excite you, though, the way that uh, this type of farming system has, has caught on. So it, it, it's good to relate that, that, your, that type of thinking now and into our concept. Yeah, because what I was trying to convince the people, too, we've been talking about it. It's not about no-till. It's never been about that. It's biomimicry. Learning how to mimic nature. I mimic life. Maybe we should have T-shirts like that. But no-till is fundamental because you don't disturb the soil ecosystem and you do very, because nature doesn't till. So we're teaching people to uh, use nature's tillage machines, the root and the root and the living biology. So that's what we're trying to teach. And that's great uh, about the point, especially that the mother nature always wants something growing there. And, and yeah, she wants to be covered. And uh, I think one of the most powerful, one of the neatest books was I read was by uh, Dr. Vandrisky. He's what the biosphere he says, the strongest biological force on the planet is life itself. I tell producers, look, if I remove the plant and if I remove the soil biology, the organisms, the bacteria, and all those creatures, then what do you have is geology. So the first thing about learning is giving people the right context and start becoming eco-literate and how the soil works. One of my most fundamental things I'd like to teach producers, the soil is alive. It's very fundamental. If I can't get producers to understand that it's alive, I can't help them reduce their inputs. Tell us about the excitement now with cover crops. How have, have you seen that growing in the U.S.? Oh, it's exploding because I think a lot of it's because we're teaching people the concept. The soil does not work without a living plant. And so covers are nature's biological primers. See, when I say the word cover, first thing comes to producers. Expense. It's a plant that I'm really not getting anything out of it. But they don't realize it's no, you're feeding biology. You're priming the soil. When a person tells me, a producer tells me, well, cover crops, I don't want to do cover crops, and they're not important, you're telling me you really don't understand how the soil works. That's what you're really saying to me. So what we're teaching is teach the producers how the system works, that it cannot function without a living plant. And I tell producers, how long do you want to go without food? Well, that's what we're doing without our soils when we don't have a living plant in it. It feeds the soil, converts the solar energy and, if, and the plant is the converter of energy, and it leaks it into the soil biology and feeds the system. The image really hit home when you showed a, a no-till image and the, the difference that covers can actually make in the soil. And that, that, that was a great example. And we've been doing that and, and showing that once producers, once you give them the proper context, Joel, it changes everything about it. And then they get excited. And once you give them the goal to emulate nature, it becomes simple. And it's, it's not hard. You can tell you really have a passion for this topic. And, and tell us about, you know, working in the human aspect uh, on one more time on, on well, what you're doing. Well, what I, what I did is I, I was quoting a lot of psychologists and I said, well, why? I said, why are we at, at the same place? We've got great technology. We have great scientists. We have all this science. But why is the land still blown away? Why do we have water quality issues? The, the thing is we have to look in the mirror. We're the problem. It's the way we look at the system. And, and what I'm trying to get producers to shift is if you bring the ecology first, if you bring the resource first and make that a focus, 
it'll change your bottom line because now you're flowing with a natural ecosystem. A lot of people say, well, I look at organic matter as an indicator. I look as this as an indicator. I look at this. When you all your inputs go down, that means you're doing a lot of things right because you're flowing with a system and you're not using as much energy because you're not fighting it. So that's what we're teaching producers. Ray Archuleta with us here at the No-Till on the Plains Winter Conference going on in Salina. I'm Joe Gangwish. Yeah.